Is HomeKit the right smart home solution for you? In this video, we're going to look at the main advantages and disadvantages of Apple's Home app. In order to do this project, you're going to need either an Apple TV, a HomePod, or an iPad, and then you'll obviously need an iOS device, so you, an iPhone, an iPad, or even an Apple Watch. Let's get started. So the Apple TV here would act as your hub. So you'll need to connect this up as usual and you'll need to use this. I've got the 4K version, but I think I'll list down the, in the description below the versions of the Apple TV that are compatible with home. So this will enable you to access your smart devices from outside of your Wi-Fi network. Now, as I mentioned, you can also use an iPad, but that iPad will need to stay at home for it to act as a hub. Even the HomePod here, it will be, you'll have exactly the same features as the Apple TV. Advantage of the Home Hub, the HomePod, sorry, would be that the fact that you can use Siri, so you can use voice activation to actually control your smart devices. So anything that you pair into the Home app, you'll be able to control it there. And I'll give you a quick demo of it. Let's go into the diagrams to have a look at actually how this all works. And then we'll have a look at a demo of the app. So I would suggest having purchasing either an Apple TV or a HomePod. Now you might already have this in your home if you're an Apple uh, user, which that makes this really easy to use because there's no actual cost for you. So the hub, you already, if you already got the hub and the actual home app comes with your iOS devices. So if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you have an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, you know, Mac, you'll have it all there already. So it's quite simple to set up and I'm just gonna go run through a few examples of products that you can use. The thing that you'll need to look out when you buy in products is for this symbol over here. Works with Apple HomeKit. And that's gonna make it really straightforward. So what happens is these gadgets have their own apps and they have their own uh, ways of being controlled. But if you add them into HomeKit, what they will do is they'll be, you'll be able to control them within the home app itself. So the Hu Philips Hue is another example of a light bulb hub that you would need to connect your light bulbs, but then the hub itself would connect into HomeKit and into the home app. So you can able to you'll be able to control all of your lights, your motions, and you can create automations. So what you can do is you can connect a smart plug so for example, you can have a smart plug turning on whenever a light has been triggered from the Hue apps. So you can combine gadgets from different vendors to create automations thanks to Apple HomeKit. Let's have a look at it now in detail. So first thing you'll see is you'll be greeted by the screen. So I've added in my Philips hub into um, into the app. I've of course also got my HomePod and I've got my Apple TV. So they're all linked in. How this works is very, very, very simple. You've got a plus sign here and this plus sign will allow you to add accessories. So you, if you go onto the Apple website, you'll see uh, an updated list of all of the accessories that are compatible with HomeKit. You'll also see a little HomeKit symbol if you go to your local store and you should be able to find accessories that are compatible. And once you have a compatible accessory, you can scan the QR code behind it and that will allow you to add it into home app. You can also create a series of rooms. So I've got several rooms and it's very simple to create a room. So tap on the home symbol here and tap on room settings and go back to rooms. So here we've got all of our rooms. We can add a new room here, so we can add it. Say garage, you can add a photo of the room and you can also customize the wallpaper of the room so you, you have it in the background. So once you've saved the room and you've clicked done, now you can start adding devices into that room. So let's take this light as an example and let's move it into the new room we created. So hard tap on landing two, and then tap on this wheel here. And let's add it, change room. So if you click or tap on the room, you can just move it to garage and that would actually move it. So now it's gone out of landing two. So if we go into garage, now we have our light 
accessory, which is fantastic. You can rename it the accessory and you can obviously turn it on and you can turn it off. So when you turn it on, you can see you have the symbol here saying lights are on. If you had multiple lights, you could turn them all off and I'll show you that now. So in the master bedroom, I've got multiple Philips Hue bulbs. And if I turn three of them on, I've got a little three lights are on and I've got this master switch, which I can turn on from here and on. And, and so you've got the whole room control, which is really convenient. To rename an accessory, you hard tap, go back on the wheels and you can change the name. So this is the name that you set. If, if you're using the same name you set from the Philips Huey app, you don't need to change this, which is quite convenient. In the home page, we have an overview of our favorite accessories, favorite scenes, and some quick glance information here above here. Here we have temperature, so we're able to see all of our uh, temperature sensors around the house, and we have a little average here for sort of to total temperature of the home. I have my favorite scene here, the good night scene, which is really convenient because you can turn everything off in the evening makes it really, really simple. To add a new scene, tap on the plus button and go add scene. Now you have some suggested scenes. Good morning, I'm home, I'm leaving. So let's say I'm home. I'm home. What will happen when um, you tap I'm home? We're gonna turn all the lights on. Okay, let's give this a go. So we go done and I've got my I'm home. So if I were to toggle this on, all the lights will have turned on and I can toggle it off just here and I've got the lights off. So let me create another scene and create I'm leaving and I'm leaving will turn everything off. So now I can do I'm home, everything on and I'm leaving everything off. We've also detected motion in the landing now since so someone's moving around the house and this would appear in your home page. So if you have this set up in a central location, you can use an iPad as a dashboard. So if this is your first automation you're creating, you'll be created with this create new automation button. Just tap it and you've got some suggestions. Let's start with people arrive. So tap on when people arrive. So when I arrive at home or when anyone arrives at home, which is part of your family, so they need an iOS device for this to work and you can say at any time and in any location, so you could have multiple homes. And when everyone comes in, I want to trigger my I'm, ho I'm home scene. So we'll go next and done. That was quite simple. What happens when everyone leaves the home? So if everyone leaves the home, we want to trigger I my scene. So go plus, so people leave. So when the last person leaves, so in this example, if someone's still at home, we don't want this to trigger. We only want to trigger when it's the last person leaving. And when the last person will leave the home, we're going to trigger I'm leaving. And I'm leaving is going to turn all the lights off. And we've set that previously in the scene. And we'll click tap done. Now we've got very two basic automation set up. That's really going to be really useful for a lot of people just to get started automations and building a smart home. With iOS 14 now, you also have suggestions. So if you tap on a motion sensor, you can see here, you've got automations. And basically, this is already telling you, it's suggesting a type of automation you could potentially want. When landing sensor detects motion, turn on landing one. And you might say, yes, I want to do that. And you just turn it on and that's it. If you go back to the automations tab, now this is also in the automations tab. This is really, really the fast, fast solution. And really, I can't see another provider giving you a quicker way of doing this. Now I'll give you a quick demo of the home app on the Apple Watch. So you've got all your favorite accessories here and you can just scroll here and you can see them all and to interact with them is very simple you just tap here we go and then tap back on again and this way you can turn on and turn off things you need to flag your accessories are favorite 
for them to appear on the watch but it's really convenient and also lower the brightness and then put it back up to 100 percent and you can change the color if you have a colored enable bulb so you change the blue done and that's sorted so at the end who is this really for let's have a look at the pros and cons first pros we've got ease of use the hub is a multi-purpose hub not only you can choose to have a different hub but your hub actually does different things if you pick an apple tv it actually you can stream movies and act as a hub whereas in different providers different hubs they just act as a smart hub and do nothing else so that's really big advantage there secure and private it is secure and private and that can also be seen as a limitation because only certain devices are actually HomeKit approved. Now that list is growing, but still it's a lot less uh, of a variety compared to like Home Assistant or other solutions. Another con is it's iOS only. So it's not compatible with Android or Windows at the time of this recording. And you can only do really basic automations like I've shown you. You can do them very quickly and that's gonna cover a lot of basic uh, use cases, but for more intermediate and more advanced use cases, you're quite limited. So who is this really for? I, in my opinion, this is for an existing Apple user. So if someone that's invested already in their kit, it will actually cost them nothing in terms of hardware and in terms of software. It's a turnkey, sol turnkey solution. So it's very simple to set up as I've seen, as I've shown you. And you really don't need to dedicate any time to it. Once you've set up, you sort of forget about it and it works in the background. You don't need to tinker with codings and keeping it up to date because Apple will provide software updates and with each iOS release, it will actually improve the home experience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in our smart home automation, I'll put a playlist here where you can actually explore other videos I've made around Home Assistant and other smart devices. Keep safe.